welcome to One on One on CHCO TV. My name is John Higgins and I am your host and I've never been so proud of anything in my life. We are today at the, this, is a, this show is gonna be great. I'm in a gallery called, and I don't wanna get way ahead of myself, but I'm gonna, it's called Bay Moon Gallery. It's the gallery of artist Jesse Hat. Jesse, hi. How are you, John? I am just great. Welcome to the gallery. I love the gallery. <laughs> it's fun, eh? It sure is. It certainly is. Being an artist, which you are, okay, do you, when do you figure out, I'm an artist? <laughs> when, when do you find... When do I figure it out? <laughs> well, I mean, I think art in general, painting, but art in general, it's, it's... <sighs> It's probably been the only aspect of my life that I've always felt really confident in. Yeah. Um, and if I couldn't feel entirely confident, then at least I could be gutsy. You know, it's only paint. What, what do I have to lose? So if I can come up with these crazy ideas and, and put them out there, then I, I have nothing to lose other than not trying. Did you know at an early age? Very, was, yeah. Really? Tell yeah. me about that. Well, we, we had a really big art education growing up. Uh, my mom was a Sunday school teacher, so she was always coming up with little crafts to make for the kids every Sunday. And, um, you know, the, my parents were both painters. They, they were both artistic, but they, they had paint as hobbies. Um, they loved Bob Ross. We lo watched a lot of Bob Ross. Oh, the guy on. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so there were lots of oil paintings of mountains all over our house all the yeah, time. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, um, Mom really taught us how to be resourceful as well. So maybe if we didn't have money to buy somebody a birthday gift, then we could go out on the beach and find a shell and paint it or find a rock and paint it and give it to them and, and they would like it just as much or, or even more. I was right? going to say, can you imagine? Yeah. So that's, that's kind of always how I think I've lived my life is just being resourceful in that sense and trying to make something out of nothing. Um, it definitely developed, you know, later on in my teen years and, and I got into a few more things with art and then um, I got pregnant with my daughter at a very young age. So, you know, while you're raising toddlers, there's not a whole lot of extra time for really? myself yeah. and hobbies yeah, and yeah. painting. So yeah. I did let it go for a few years. Um, and then I would say it was probably my mid-20s. I was a single mom at the time. And I was living in a bachelor pad with my daughter and I just wanted to buy a house. I wanted to buy a house so badly. So I thought, you know what, I, what have I got? I've got my art skills, I can paint. So I'm going to paint some canvases and I'm going to try to sell them and see if I can make a little extra money so that I can pay a, a deposit on and get a house. Um, it wasn't long after that that I met my husband and we were able to find this place and it was small but it was a home so yeah. we made it into a home and we made it work and uh, I didn't have a studio or anything to paint in then so I just took up one corner of the couch and one corner of the living room and took all my canvases and I, I made my bookshelves into drying racks yeah, and I stacked them all do, up yeah, drying yeah, and, yeah. and you know you make do. I and, understand work. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so then so, so then um, we got the house and I kept going with painting. I loved it so much and, and I, you know, was able to save up a little more for other things. And it was always kind of in the back of my mind, you know, maybe, maybe someday I can open my own little shop. Maybe I can retire with it. It, you know, it's um, kind of a, a, a pipe dream not really knowing how I was going to be able to get to yeah. that point well, because here I am sitting on oh, the corner of my couch we're in it yeah pushing we're, we're, my dog away <laughs> from my painting so that he doesn't get dog hair <laughs> you know I, I want to tell you we're sitting in the middle of your pipe dream here right yes. now yes <laughs> I know, Just to know. so um <clears throat> Yeah, so I, I did the craft fair circuit for a number of years, and uh, then um, my mom. My mom was the one who taught me how to paint initially. We, we really? were very, very young. You. Yeah, she. Uh, you know, I remember being three, four years old, and she would be teaching us how to blend sunsets on these little wooden plaques that my dad had cut out for us, and and so here we are painting 
sunsets and silhouetted trees and little rowboats in the water at like three, four years old before we were even in school, my sister and I. So it, it, the skills were definitely nurtured at a very young age. Yeah. And so it, when mom, my mom got sick, she had cancer and she battled very hard for six years. Wow. And she was always that person that whenever I painted something, I could bring her to her. And that was, you know, if she was sick and having a bad day, I could be like, hey, mom, look what I painted today. And really? she'd be like, oh, I love that, Jess. You know, oh, it's so, so beautiful. Perfect. Or maybe that's not her style, but she would still be really nice about it anyways. <laughs> yeah, really, yeah. <laughs> so it, it just, it, that was a happy part of, of my life. And so closer to when she passed, it really, it really became prominent in my life that I, I just needed to do this for me. I needed to be happy. Yeah. And painting was my therapy. Painting was the one place where I could truly be myself and I could show off and be proud of it and just go all out there and not hold anything back. And really? I just, I just needed to do it. So the thought of, well, I have no space in this tiny little house. I was worried that if I started a business and I was renting a place, maybe if I had a rough month or two getting started, then mm -hmm. I would fail automatically because I couldn't make rent. So that's when the decision was made. I'm going to build it here. I'm going to Good attach it onto my home so that I can, if I need to stop into the house for a minute, I can start a load of laundry if I have to in between <laughs> letting my paintings dry you know oh, yeah. I, I find that uh, some people maybe don't like to mix that business and home life but I think that that's what I needed for me yeah. and I get to hang out with my dogs every day yeah, and just yeah. you know it's it's I, I don't mind not being in the public light so much and just being on my own. I yep. wanted to be my own boss and to be able to take care of my family and provide for my family, but also still feel fulfilled in a way that you, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. You and I both previously worked really in the public life. Mm -hmm. There does come a point, doesn't there, when you say, I don't want to do this anymore. You got to that point. I did. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, it was shortly after mom passed. It, I was grieving. I mean, I was grieving before I was grieving. Yep. And it was a lot. I felt really, really lost. And I just, I just wanted to do this so bad. Really? I just Good wanted for to you. So badly. Do you know how proud your mom would be of you? No, I, <laughs> I, I can't even. No. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Um, you just wanted to do this so bad. I did. Yeah. I did. I just wanted to do this so bad, and I thought, you know. Life is too short to not live every single day to the absolute most. What did, so, you, what did your mom tell you? Uh, before she passed, I did tell her that this is what I was going to do. Yeah. Um, she nodded and told me that was really nice and yeah. she was happy for me. But whether she took it as uh, this is actually going to happen or not, I, I, it doesn't really matter to me because I got to tell her. So. And, and uh, what about living outside the box? Oh, yes. <laughs> I love it. I love she, this. See, this is something that I will always hold dear to me. And I, I, I remember being upset one day because um, I had this crazy idea for some, some crazy art project. And uh, other people thought it was a little too crazy of an idea, that it was a bit out there. And I was kind of distraught over it. So I had, you know, called mom up and, and told her about it. And she's like, you know, Jess... It's okay to think outside of the box all the time. <laughs> I love it. And it's, <laughs> you know what, that's me. It is thinking you. outside of the box all the time. You see stuff that somebody else wouldn't see. That's the artist, right? I, I like to think so. I think that that in general is, is how you define an artist, is, is being able to find those humble things in life and make them beautiful. Put a spotlight on them and maybe change their surroundings a little bit and just really just make the world a more beautiful place exactly that's it's it's a gift I, there's no other way to put it i mean you you have a gift thank you and so many people 
including me, wish that we could live, could live like you do, that, you know, just that way. It, I mean, it hasn't been easy. Um, I definitely have sacrificed a lot, and I do live a very, very humble life, a very simple life, but I like that. That's what I, you want. I, I wanted a simple life. Um, and yeah, it's enough for me to handle on, on my own. Exactly. Yep. So, do you show your paintings outside the gallery now, or most of your I mean, um, I do. they're beautiful. There I, are a few, like the Charlotte County Fall Fair, I was there last okay, year, and yeah, I, yeah. I brought my paintings on yeah. site. Um, so, but the thought of building this place was kind of so I could have a permanent craft fair of my own, I guess would exactly. be a way of, exactly. of putting it. Um, it. When you've got a lot of paintings and a lot of prints and glass and, you know, not a whole lot of resources. Um, this it's, was, it's hard to travel back and forth uh, to markets but, and things get destroyed yeah. and ruined and you have to do touch-ups and it was it was a lot of wear and tear on me and the art yeah. so it was this that's why this was important to me because I wanted to be able to have a place to display it that people could come in and see it and purchase it if they wanted to but it I could be open whenever I wanted to exactly. I didn't have to travel yeah. to them they could travel to me right yeah it's a brilliant idea thank you I mean it, it really is you what, what are we, five kilometers from St. Stephen? We're just, about that. you know, just by, everybody's going to know by the causeway. About this is where that. we are. Yeah, yeah, we're just around the corner from the yeah. causeway. It and is. You can exactly. Spit and hit the water, basically. Exactly. So. <laughs> exactly. Speaking about spitting and hitting the water, <laughs> I want to, uh, we're going to go for a break, okay? And uh, then uh, I want to know, I want to ask you about the name of the gallery. We're going to talk about that when we get back in just a minute. Welcome back. I am with artist Jesse Hatt. So good to talk to you. You as well. I'm so glad you guys came today. Oh, love it, love it, love it. Okay. The name of the gallery. I love that. The Bay Moon. The Bay, the Bay Moon. Moon How'd you come up with that? So, uh, that was a lot of brainstorming yeah. with me and my family and a few friends. And I, I wanted to go with gallery because I felt that it, I mean, it's, it's artwork, a gallery. right? It is a gallery. It it's not a just gallery. a gift shop, it's a gallery. Right. So we that, were going with gallery. Right. Let's clarify that. This is not a gift shop. This is a gallery. Yeah. Right on. Yeah, okay. And then I, I've i always been very attracted to the moon, those that mystical kind of witchy sense. I wanted to be able to bring those vibes into the gallery as well. So I knew I wanted moon in the name. And so we went through every moon name you could think of, blue moon, full moon, half moon, <laughs> blood moon, Crying all moon. new moon, all of them, all of them. And so I was just, I had this vision in my head of, you know, we're in Oak Bay and, and the moon reflects on the water. And, and that's when I thought, you know, Bay Moon, that's, you see... The yeah, moon up in the can, sky, and then you the see moon. it reflecting yeah. down on the bay, and that's that's a bay moon. That's so it's beautiful. the bay moon gallery, and then it reminds everybody that I'm in Oak Bay, Ex so it kind yeah. of relates it to yeah. the area. And so like that's, you said, you were, we you were born moon. and brought up right across the bay. Yep. Right, yeah. Yeah, born that's and raised. A, yeah. So this is this Excellent. is my neighborhood. <laughs> this is your neighborhood. Come so far. <laughs> so, I want to know about the art battle. Is that it? Art Battle. Art Battle. Yes. Tell me all about it. Tell me about it. So Art Battle is a live speed painting competition. So it's worldwide. They have events all over the world, but it is mostly in Canada and the U.S. That's where you can, they have national, they go up to a, a national level competition. Um, at each competition for Art Battle, they'll generally have 12 artists, three rounds. Round one will have the first six artists paint head-to-head -head against each other. Wow. The second round will have the other six artists paint head-to-head -head against each other. And then the audience online as well as, as at the event will vote on their favorite painting. And the top two artists from round one and the top two artists from round two will go head-to-head -head in a round three and, and paint another painting. So each, each painting, we have, or each round, we have uh, 20 minutes to turn an 18 by 24 canvas into a piece of art, whatever subject matter we want. Um, a, blank, they, a, blank a blank canvas. Piece of canvas. Yep. Wow. And it's big. 
it's a lot bigger than you would think well, when you get up imagine. to it. <laughs> so yeah, so we have 20 minutes. Um, I was it, just thinking, what happens if your mind just goes blank? It's not good. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Yeah. It's not good. Um, I, I, so pra gotta... I practiced a lot so that the, the motions and what colors to use and what brushes to use would almost be memorized and imprinted in my mind yeah. so that if yeah, I yeah. did blank, I could just, I knew where to go. Oh, okay. Right? Um, so yeah, Art Battle, my, my little sister, she ended up getting me some tickets for her and myself and my daughter to go up for my birthday. And then as we got closer to the event and we seen the posts coming through and they needed one more artist to, to participate, um, a fire got lit inside me and my competitive spirit came out and I was like, you know what, let's, let's do this. Why so, not? I think we just, we had so many years of sadness in our house and in our family that we just, we wow. just needed something good, just something fun to just lighten us all up. Outside the box. Yeah. So my, my whole family got together and we all went up to, to St. John. We ended up breaking down on the way and, and, oh, yeah. oh, and oh, so other yeah. family members came and, and rescued us. And so we had even more family up there than we were supposed to originally. And, um, amazing group of artists to compete against. It, it, it was just such a fun atmosphere and so much talent and somehow i'm not really sure how but i ended up I was, winning did that he? competition you won i got i got the saint john title so uh that Whoa. was really exciting that was a really good night nobody i don't think any of us were really expecting that um and it qualified me for the provincial round so that's coming up on on june 24th so they'll have um past winners of art battle from all over new brunswick there's there's been a few in fredericton and saint john and and uh and whatnot so yeah they'll what? they'll be bringing a bunch of artists in to compete for the provincial level what did you paint i gotta ask you uh my round one i painted an octopus oh yeah a nice uh, salmon colored octopus and my second round i I, I painted a landscape but it was more the color scheme i think that drew everybody's eye because i ha i have a really hard time choosing colors so i just used all of them yeah. Um, so it was kind of a, a rainbow aspect, kind of showing lights and shadows using bright colors and warm tones and cool tones versus light and dark paint. I guess that's kind of a hard way of explaining it, but that's me no, thinking outside doing of the it. box. You're doing it. <laughs> um, yeah. So it was a it was a landscape for my final piece, and that's what ended up taking the title. Where do you get? When does it come to you that you say, "I want to paint that"? How do you, uh, how does it, how does that work? I, I mean, you know, see, I don't have that, you know. Well, I mean, I'm the blind I do a piece lot of, of commission paper. work, so sometimes I just <clears throat> I have to paint it, whether oh, okay. whether I like it or not. Oh, okay. But when it's something that I really want to paint, it usually makes me feel something, or it gives me a memory, or maybe it's just something I just love, something weird. I really like the weird stuff. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> The weird ones are my favorite. Go I think that that's something outside of the box. That's something, good for you. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> and I love bright colors. I love, um, I don't use a lot of neutral tones very often because I, I think I, I love to create something that just punches you in the face. It makes you want to look at it. Yeah. And, and to I me just, that it just, and yeah. I know it probably sounds a little weird, but I, when people cry, yeah. when, when I, you know, give them their commission piece back and, and they have that emotion of crying, like that's, to me, that's almost the best reaction you could possibly uh, that, ask yeah, for because yeah, you're, really. you're able to draw out such a deep emotion out of somebody just by giving them something that, that you were able to create, yeah. whether it's a, a dog that passed away and it looks exactly like their old dog, or yeah. it's you know grandma's old farmhouse that doesn't exist anymore, and, and I can see it's that. an old I... photo that there's only one left in the whole world, and I was able to blow it up and make it into a big painting yeah. that looked like it used to when they grew up. It, it's, it's things like that that really make it worthwhile to me because there's so much more meaning behind just the paint. Yeah. Exactly. I think you just said it right there. There's so much more meaning. You're, there's so much more meaning behind the paint. Yep. You just, you just, wow, wow. You're uh, in the gallery, I noticed. 
Do you have other artists in your gallery? I do. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I I struggled trying to you know run through the craft fairs and whatnot, and and working a full time job back in the day, yeah. as well as try to paint. And so when I built the gallery, it kind of also as another way for me to make money and keep going exactly. throughout the year exactly. would be to bring in other vendors. Yes. So I have a few other ladies. They're all all local female entrepreneurs that Perfect. I've all held very dear to my heart yes. for a number of years. Yes. And some I've known for longer than others, but they're all they all have families. Uh, I think the majority of them are all moms and they all have full-time jobs too. And this is their way of being able to make a little extra money and get their name out as well. Yeah. And give them a, a a place where they can also be able to sell their things and uh, and just and get their name have, out. Yeah. Just as what you have done. Yeah. So I didn't want really anything that would compete against each other. I wanted us to all kind of have our own little niche in here. And so, you know, I have one lady that does stained glass, another lady that does bead work, and I don't do watercolor painting. So I brought uh, a watercolor artist in. So I have some some of her art in as well. And. My daughter makes earrings. Uh, another one of my vendors' daughters makes uh, resin jewelry. So it's a little bit of everything for the, for the weird and the wonderful. You've done it. This has been the best chat that I had had for a long time. Thank you. you. Me you're too. great. You're great. You are an inspiration. Okay, that's going to wrap us up here at the gallery. What a guest. Okay, Jesse Hat has been my guest today. I'll catch you next time on One on One with John Higgins.